So this short practice can be done at any time of the day, but it's designed to awaken all the different parts of your body in a nice and gentle way. So there's no props necessary for this practice, just your yoga mat. And if you enjoy this practice, you can support me by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. And we're gonna be starting in a seated position on the ground. So I'll meet you there. So starting in Sukhasana, simple cross-legged seated position, place one hand on your belly and then one hand on your chest and close your eyes. Right away, start to feel your breath moving in and out of your body beneath your hands here. And as you notice your breath, deepen your breath. So longer inhales, longer exhales. Let your breath start to gently wake your body up from the inside out. Part of waking our body up is waking up our senses. So can you let the skin of your fingers and the palms of your hands get a little more sensitive here as you feel the heat of your body and the movement of your breath? Take two more breaths like this. Flutter your eyes open, take in the light of your space. We're gonna do a side bend to the left. So reach your left fingers to the ground to the left and then crawl your left fingers out to the left as far as they will go, keeping your fingertips down. And then reach your right hand up towards the ceiling and then reach your right arm across your right ear so that you can flare your ribs open to the right and then cinch the left side of your waist a little bit more. Heavy your right hip as you reach past your right, right fingers to the left. Take another big breath in and out here. Stay in your side bend, but reach your right hand straight up to the ceiling and look at your right hand. Pull your right hand back slightly behind you. So find more of an open twist here, turning your chest towards the ceiling. Take a breath in. Keep your arms straight, but bring your right hand towards your left hand, finding a closed twist as you exhale. Do that with your breath. So inhale to open up, follow your hand with your eyes. And exhale, closed twist, right hand towards your left. Do that one more time. Inhale, open to the right. Exhale, close to the left. Now this time, open up again, open twist, reach your right hand up. Turn the palm of your right hand back behind you. Keep that and bend your right elbow, landing the back of your right hand on your back. And then slide your left fingers in as you sit up nice and tall. Now keep the half bind of your right arm here and let your left arm come across the top of your head and land the palm of your left hand over top of your right ear and the right side of your face. And with that, use your left hand to drag your head over to the left as you drop your right shoulder down towards the ground. Pull your right elbow back slightly and push the back of your right hand into your back. Breathe as you stretch the right side of your neck for one more breath. And then to come out, drop your chin towards your chest and relax your arms by your side. Take a breath. Bring your chin more or less parallel to the ground. Switch the crossing of your legs, whichever shin was in front, bring it behind. And then we'll do that to the other side. So your right fingers come out to the right and then crawl your fingers further out to the right like a little creature. Tent all five fingertips on the ground. Reach your left hand up and then reach your left arm across your left ear. Lean your shoulders and head to the right. Flare your left ribs open to the left as you contract the right side of your waist. Take two more breaths. Keep your side bend, reach your left hand straight up and look up at your left hand. Pull your left hand and arm back, so find that open twist, inhale. Close twist, exhale, arms stay straight but reach your left hand towards your right. Do that with the breath, inhale, open up, reach your left hand up, look at the hand. Follow the hand as you exhale, close twist to the right. Last time, inhale, open twist. 
exhale, close twist. Find your open twist again. Look at your left hand that's reaching up. Turn the palm of the left hand back. Bend your left elbow, land the back of your hand on your back. Sit back up as you slide your right fingers closer in towards your hips. From there, keep your half bind with your left arm, drape your right arm across the top of your head, landing the palm of your left hand to the left side of your head. And then use your right hand to drag your head over to the right, and then drop your left shoulder down towards the ground to increase the space through the left side of your neck. Keep pulling your left elbow back, keeping that connection of the back of your left hand with your back, and stay for another breath here. And then to release, drop your chin towards your chest and relax your arms by your side. Lift your chin parallel to the ground. Let's transition to all fours facing the front of your mat. So come into a tabletop position, hands on the ground under your outer shoulders, knees under your hips. Staying with the neck here, turn your chin towards your right shoulder, so turn your face to the right, and then keep that and add a back bend. Arch your back into cow pose, lift your tail, stretch your chest, and then drop your head forward, round your spine, cat pose. Do that to the left. So turn your chin towards the left shoulder and find cow pose, arch your back into a back bend, drop your head forward and down, round your spine into cat. Do that with the breath. So turn your chin to the right, back bend into cow, inhale, and then exhale, cat pose at center, rounding your spine. Chin to the left, inhale, back bend. Exhale, cat pose at center. One more each side. Chin to the right, find cow pose as you arch your back, inhale. And then exhale, back to center, rounding your spine. Last time to the left, chin to the left, find your back bend, inhale. And exhale, back to center, cat pose. Find your way to a neutral spine. Bring your right hand closer to your left so that you create a space to step your right foot forward into a low lunge. Keep your right foot there and then start to lift your torso up, stacking your hands on your front thigh. Arrive in a low lunge with your right foot forward. We're gonna find a twist. So place both of your hands to the outside of your right thigh. Keep your right knee where it is, but use your hands to help turn your chest and ribs to the right. Maybe look over your right shoulder with your eyes. Keep digging your front heel down. Now find your breath. Stay here in your twist. Reach just your right arm back towards the back of your mat. You can either stay or start to draw huge circles through the air in your twist with your right fingers. So make a huge circumference through the air to the right with your right fingers and see if you can keep the rest of your body still while isolating the movement at your right shoulder. Go for full range of motion without holding your breath. Soften your low belly and keep breathing. Let's find one more circle. And then from there, untwist back to center. Look at the front of your mat. Maybe let your pelvis glide forward towards your front heel a little bit more, getting more length and space through the front of your back thigh. Last breath. Look down to your mat. Reach your hands down to the ground to the inside of your front foot. Lean your weight to your left knee and step your right knee back to that tabletop position. Let's switch sides. So walk your hands to the right, left hand close to the right hand. So you've got space towards the left of the front of your mat to step your left foot forward to a low lunge. And then stack your hands onto your front thigh to help lift your torso up to that low lunge position on the left. We'll find our twist on this side. So place both of your hands to the outer left thigh. Use that to help rotate your chest and ribs to the left. Look over your left shoulder. Breathe, feel that rotation all the way from your low back out through your eyes 
and then reach just your left arm back in the direction of your back foot. You can either stay or start to draw circles here with the left arm through space. It really doesn't matter which way you draw the circles. Go for the largest circumference you possibly can while trying to keep the rest of your body as still as possible. And in the stillness of the rest of your body, can you still feel your breath moving in and out? Let's go one more big circle waking up the left shoulder. Now look to the front of your mat, a little different now. Lean forward, land all 10 fingers forward in front of your left toes, tuck your back toes and lift your back knee so that you can step your back foot forward to meet your front, coming into a forward fold at the front of your mat. Have your feet hip width apart, bend your knees a lot as you lean your torso forward and down, let gravity take a hold of the crown of your head, allowing the back of your neck to get longer. Think of lengthening the sides of your neck as well as you take one more deep breath in and out. So we're going to round ourselves up. So bend your knees even more. Keep your chin towards your chest. Shift your weight to your heels. And like one vertebra at a time, start to unravel yourself all the way up to Tadasana. Let your head be the very last thing to arrive as it stacks upon the graceful curves of your spine. Take a breath in and out here. We're gonna do what's called zombie bounces. So it's a little unconventional, not really yoga. <laughs> Soften your knees, round yourself forward and down about halfway so that your chin tucks to your chest, your spine is in this C curve position. Really let your shoulders hang down, fingers super heavy. Now we keep our legs basically as they are as we start to bounce our torso up and down. So I think of this as kind of bobbing the chest up and down in space, and then let there be kind of a reverberating effect through the rest of the upper body as you find this pulse up and down. So we're training the elasticity of the muscles of our back. It's called fascial recoil. So keep the bouncing going, keep your hips and legs basically as they are, and as you keep bouncing, just twist your torso slightly to the right. So now you're bouncing over your right leg. You're kind of turned towards the long edge of your mat. Keep your bouncing going. Keep your head and fingers heavy. Come back to center. Keep your bouncing going and go over to the left. Feel what it feels like on this side, keeping the head heavy, bobbing the chest up and down. Keep your bouncing going, coming back to center. Keep your bouncing going, just slow it down. And then when you're ready, start to round yourself back up. Take your time. And as soon as you arrive in Tadasana, close your eyes. Feel everything you can feel in your body. Let your body be sensitive to the reverberating effects of that dynamic movement here in your dynamic stillness. Take a breath. Flutter your eyes open again. Take in the light. Reach your arms behind you here and interlace your fingers. As you reach your knuckles straight down towards the ground, start to reach your chest straight up towards the ceiling. Can you keep that as you bend your knees and find a full back bend here in a standing position? So stick your bum out. Think lifting your tail behind you, flaring your ribs. Pull your thumbs away from your bum. Keep looking up. Take two big breaths. Keep the bind of your hands. Look forward. Hinge forward from your hips like you're trying to drape your belly over your thighs and then lift your thumbs even further away from your low back and bum as your head bows down. Feel the space you're creating in the fronts of your shoulders for one more breath. 
Let your fingers come to the mat in front of your face. Trickle your fingers down. Land your fingers on the ground with bent knees. Breathe in and reach your chest slightly forward. Shift your weight to your left foot. Step your right toes back to a long lunge and then drop your back knee to the ground. So coming back to that low lunge position, this time we're gonna find half Hanumanasana. So walk your fingers slightly back, pull your bum back, keep your back knee where it is, and then lift your left toes and try to get as long as you can through the back of your left leg and knee. Look at your left toes, place your fingers anywhere that you can feel supported as you lean your chest forward and pull your sitting bones back. And as you eye your left toes, maybe start to turn your toes slightly in and out. So dialing the angle of your foot from left to right, which is really coming from the hip crease, but we see it in the foot. <laughs> And then maybe linger somewhere along that journey of your toes side to side where you feel something really interesting through the back of your leg. Find the most interesting angle and stay for another breath. Rebend your front knee, land your front foot. From there, bring your fingertips to the inside of your front foot, tuck your back toes and lift your back knee, lunge. From there, we're gonna walk our fingers to the right. Turn all 10 toes to the right, leaving the feet where they are. Straighten your legs and then bow forward over your legs. I say straighten your legs, but if you need to bend your knees, go for it. Think sitting bones lifting up as your feet push down. And again, invite gravity to catch hold of the crown of your head, lengthening all sides of your neck towards the ground. We're gonna stay here in stillness for two more breaths. Be sensitive to what you feel in terms of feedback through the backs of your legs. And then from here, we're going to transition to face the back of our mat. So bend both of your knees. Look to the back of your mat near your right foot. Crawl your fingers towards the back of your mat and turn all 10 toes to face the back of your mat in a lunge. And then drop your back knee to the ground, which is now your left knee. We're gonna find that half Hanumanasana here with the right leg forward. So walk your fingers back, pull your hips slightly back and try to get as long as you can through the back of your right leg as you lift your right toes. Place your fingers where they're going to support the lean of your torso forward and the pull of your hips back. And as you look at your right foot and breathe, start to turn your right toes in and out kind of like a windshield wiper side to side. Feel all those different angles of your hamstrings, the muscles underneath the thigh, and then pick an angle that feels extra interesting today. Deepen your breathing as you receive the sensation from the back of your leg. Let your body recognize that it is safe to feel something. One more breath. Rebend your right knee and plant the foot flat. Bring your fingers forward to frame your right foot. Tuck your left toes, your back toes, and then lift your back knee, lunge. And then we'll reverse that. So walk your hands to the left, turn all 10 toes to the left, back to that wide-legged forward fold, drop your head down. If you need to bend your knees, do so as much as you like. We're here for two breaths. From here, think heel toeing your feet towards each other, towards the middle of your mat. So shorten the width of your stance and then bend your knees and step one knee to the ground at a time until you find yourself on your knees. We're gonna use this to transition to sit on our bum. Stay facing the long edge of your mat that you're facing. Sit down and step your feet out in front of you, wider than your outer hips. Land your hands behind you for a moment. With your feet wider than your hips and your knees bent, drop your knees and thighs to the left. And then we're gonna stay here, sit up on your left bum cheek and turn your chest towards the short edge of your mat by your left shin, the front of your mat. And then from there, lean forward over your inner left thigh 
if you can either stay, but if you can reach your left hand forward, like you're karate chopping the ground with the outer blade of the left hand, and then slide the left hand forward to help pull your chest towards the ground in front of you. And then slide the hand back, lifting the torso slightly up. Let's do that one more time. Slide your left hand as far forward as it goes. And that might not be as far as I'm reaching. You go where you are. And then keep your torso leaning forward over your left leg. Just relax your hands. Maybe land your forearms to the ground. Maybe it's hands to the ground. Feel your upper body draped over your inner left leg as you heavy your head and find your breath. Maybe close your eyes. In your stillness, feel all the feedback you're getting from your outer left hip and thigh. Try not to label sensation as good, bad, or right or wrong. Feel your way through it. When we label, that's the work of the mind. As long as there's no sharp pain, anything goes in terms of sensation. Breathe into what you feel here for three more breaths. Use your hands on the ground to lift your torso up. Bring your hands behind your bum to that original position we found so that we turn our body open to the long edge of our mat. Bring your knees back to center. Make sure your feet are wider than your hips. And then we'll go the other way. So drop your knees and thighs to the right. Sit up on your right bum cheek. Turn your torso to face the back of your mat. And then lean yourself forward over your right leg. Do that karate chop with your right hand so the outer blade of the hand lands on the ground. Left fingers to support as you slide your right hand forward, lean yourself forward over your inner right thigh, and then slide it back to lift the shoulders back and up. Do that again, and then we'll stay forward. So either keeping the hand as it is, or maybe as you lean your torso forward, you can land your forearms to the ground in front of your right knee and shin. Maybe it's the hands on the ground if you're not leaning as far forward as I am. Either way, round your spine forward and invite gravity into your head like we've been doing. Close your eyes. Keep your low belly soft. Keep the skin of your body sensitive. teaching our body to move towards sensation. We are sensate creatures. We are designed to feel our way through this life. So for three more breaths, feel anything and everything you can feel in your body right here. Use your hands on the ground to help round yourself up, sitting back up onto your right bum cheek. Bring your hands behind you again, same way we came into it. Let's come out, bringing the knees back to center, feet on the ground. Let's give ourselves a hug, but first slide your feet closer in, soles of the feet down, knees bent, wrap your arms under your thighs, tuck your chin, Round your spine and think about pulling your chest towards the back of your body. Slide your shoulder blades apart. Breathe into the space between your shoulder blades. Take another breath. And then let's sit back up. We're gonna come into a resting position to close our practice. So if you don't feel like lying down right now, if you wanna kinda of keep your energy a little bit elevated, come back into a seated position, placing your hands on your body, one around your chest, one around your belly. Otherwise, you can lie down and either find Shavasana with your legs extended long, or you can come into Supta Bada Konasana, bending your knees, starting with the feet on the ground, and then let your knees widen away from each other, turning the soles of your feet towards each other. Maybe your feet touch, maybe they don't. 
Maybe your arms land on the ground by your sides, or maybe you land one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. Relax your elbows to the ground if you're placing your hands on your body, unless you're in a seated position. <laughs> Close your eyes. Use your hands as feedback for your breath. So let your palms and fingertips be super sensitive to the movement of your inhales and exhales. Feel how alive you are under your hands. Can you lengthen your exhales just to slow your heart rate down to cue your nervous system that it's time to rest and relax, even if we're just here for a minute. So as best you can for the rest of your day, feel your way through your day. Let your body guide you through in terms of what it can feel what it can sense, using your senses and your sensitivity to ground you in the reality of this moment. The more we can do that, the less we get swept up in the stories of our mind. So let yourself settle into some stillness here. Give yourself permission to stay here as long as you can today. And this is where I'll leave you, and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And I hope we get to practice together again soon. And thank you so much for practicing with me today. <laughs>